I've always loved that book. It's, um, people say, like, if you were stranded on a desert island, which book you, would you take with you? I would take Lao Tzu. Um, and it's curious. We don't even know whether Lao Tzu existed. Um, probably not. But you, wouldn't have, you would not have minded uh, people thinking that he doesn't exist. <laughs> um, because actually, uh, one thing that's recorded about him is that he tried to erase personal information <laughs> throughout his life. Um, the first chapter of Lao Tzu's book, of the Tao Te Ching, is an extremely dense formulation of some very fundamental uh, fundamental realizations about the nature of reality, and and can be read at many different levels. Uh, the first verse, which is like so crucial, is like. Um, um, Dao ke dao fei chang dao. The dao that can be expressed uh, is not a constant dao, or is not the eternal dao, it's not the ultimate dao. Um, which on one level it's like the realization that all postmodern thinking is based on. It's like we only have maps of reality. All our, all our discourse is discourse about reality. We don't... Um, and, and map, the map is not the territory, as Kudzibski realized. Um, so on one level, the Tao that can be talked about, interesting that that word talk is one of the meaning of Tao itself. So the, the Chinese verse is Tao ke Tao. We could translate it as the Tao that can be Taoed is not the Tao. As soon as you hold on to any one representation of reality, you've missed it. Um, so on one, on one level, that invites us to be aware that we are dealing in representations of reality. And reality is beyond all representations. Um, but there's many layers to Lao Tzu's message. And um, the second verse says, um, any name that can be named is not a constant name. And the third verse is, Without name is the origin of heaven and earth. With name is the mother of the 10,000 things. So that naming, um, on one level, points to representations of reality, to discourse about reality. But on a deeper level, it points to the fact that um, in experiencing, the word appears to stand in front of us as other, as an objective world out there, and me as an observer in here. That split, that apparent split of, of the unity of experience into subject and object is I believe, the deeper meaning of Lao Tzu's naming. So when he says, without name, uh, the origin of heaven and earth, with name, the mother of the 10,000 things, he means, as soon as that split is there, and that split is intrinsic to the nature of experience as an embodied observer, so it's not something that we could do without. <laughs> um, as soon as that is there, uh, the word appears to be made of things. The word appears solid, classical, and uh, made of 10,000 things, of the myriad realities. 
Um, and the next verse uh, from this, let's say, very ontological statement uh, moves closer to our personal experience when he says, um, therefore, without desire, you experience the mystery of reality. With desire, you experience the boundaries. You experience form. You experience distinction. You experience the 10,000 things. Desire is the motion of the eye, is, is the movement of the separate eye, which is um, seeking fulfillment, seeking happiness. Um, Buddha says, the first noble truth of Buddha is like, existence is suffering, where existence comes from Latin ex sister, standing out. Standing out as an I, as a separate self, is suffering, is intrinsically bound to frustration. Because the separate self is impermanent, the separate self is not ultimately real. <laughs> so we are, we are attached to this unreality uh, which will eventually dissolve back into the, into the whole. There's a paradox there, uh, and that's Lotze's pointing to that paradox in the last verse of that first chapter, uh, which, essentially, which essentially says that there's no difference between the naming and the unnamed. The naming arises within the unnamed and is uh, only from the separate point of view of the named. Naming and the unnamed appear different um, from the point of view of the unnamed. Naming and the unnamed are the same. He said, Lao Tzu says, these two, and, and these two he means like named and unnamed, desire and desirelessness, uh, um, arise together, but we name them differently. Holding them together is the door to all wonders. I think that's a very compact formulation of what we call the spiritual path or whatever, <laughs> realizing.